In this tutorial, I will show you how to import test questions into D2L where they have been created outside of D2L in the comma delimited format. Comma delimited or CSV is a great format for writing and importing questions because the questions can be easily created in Excel. I have a separate tutorial on that here in YouTube. For this tutorial, the questions have already been created and are saved on my computer. What you see on the screen is an actual D2L course I am teaching this semester at Kennesaw State University. I will be importing the questions into a new question section in the question library. I begin by clicking on Quizzes on the main menu. Keep in mind that institutions can customize the D2L interface, so your version likely will not look exactly like my version. Here, we see a list of quizzes in the course. Next, I click on the question library. Here, we see a list of sections on the left of the screen with the list repeated in the center. The list is repeated in the center only because we have not clicked on a question section on the left. I want to store the questions in a new section, so I click on the New button. From the drop-down list, I select Section. This brings up a screen for entering a name for the new section. I will call this Exam Number 1 Preparation. There's other information you can enter to describe the section, but I will not enter that here because it is not required. I click on Save to save the new section. It is important to note that I am not now working in the new section. Rather, D2L returned me to the main screen. Before importing the questions, I need to be in that new section. New sections are always added to the end of the list. So, I scroll down to the bottom of the list and click on my new section. This changes the center of the screen to a list of the questions that are in the section. Since this is a new section, there are not any questions in it and so the list is blank. I want to import the question, so I click on Import. This gives me a number of options. To import a file, I need to change the input source from an existing collection to text format, so I click on the first drop-down list and switch to From a D2L Text Format File. Two notes are imported at this point. First, notice that the screen changed once I made my selection. That is because I now only have the option of pointing to a source file. Second, the dialog box calls this a text file, but it's not really. As the blue note indicates, it has to be a comma delimited file, also known as a CSV file. This is not what you and I think of as a text file. I have already created this file and I have a separate YouTube tutorial on how to create it. For this tutorial, my file has 121 questions I am importing. To find the file, I click on Browse. D2L brings up a file dialog box. The dialog box automatically goes to the last folder I used to import files from D2L. This happens to be the one that contains my questions. The file name is 02121603.csv, so I click on that file and then click on Open. Open really does not open the file. Rather, it places it in the queue to be processed by D2L. However, nothing has happened yet. To start the uploading and conversion, I click on Save. D2L uploads and processes the file. How long that takes will depend on how many questions are in the file and how fast of an internet connection you have. Once it is done, D2L displays the first page of questions and I am done. Had there been errors in the CSV file, D2L would have imported the questions that did not have errors, as well as displaying an error message and question numbers for each question that had an error. Like most D2L error messages, these tend not to be very helpful. That's it. I am done and all the questions have been imported. If you found this tutorial useful, I have two MOOCs on Udemy.com that may interest you. The first is called Creating Exciting Videos Using PowerPoint Slides. It will show you how to take your classroom PowerPoint slides and turn them into videos with narration that you can use for your online courses. If you teach operations management or a related course, then your students will definitely be interested in my Working Operations Management Problems course. It has over eight hours of tutorials giving step-by-step -step instructions on how to work every type of problem that is typically covered in operations management. 